Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called God's Perfect Peace for Us. It's like this is a how to experience God's perfect peace manual if we want to read it. Jesus said, in this world you'll have stressful tribulation. But in him we can have peace with God. He can help us to overcome the tribulation. The Bible says that the Lord of peace can give us peace at all times in every way. It's like if we put our mind on our best friend God, best friend, all-powerful God, and trust in Him, not us, we can have perfect peace of mind. The problem is we want to trust in ourselves, not God, and that creates fear and worry like a Martha or something. How do I do it myself? This is too stressful. This tribulation I got to live in. But it's like the Jesus and the boat during the storm story. It's like the storm is like the stresses and problems of life and uh, if the disciples had to put their eyes on Jesus, their best friend, all-powerful God with them in the boat. They wouldn't be as afraid. Jesus said to them, why are you so fearful? It's like he's saying, why are you so fearful? I'm here. That's how we have peace. We believe our perfect Father God's with us, our best friend God is with us, he's all-powerful, Superman's living inside of us. How powerful God is, believing the truth about God. Moses could have been all worried at the Red Sea, but instead he heard God say to him, Fear not, Moses, stand still and see my salvation for you. And that's the way God wants it to be with us. He wants to put us in fiery trials and tribulation and stuff to see if we'll seek his way of deliverance out of it. We'll trust in him to help us through it. He's trying to develop faith in us. It says like in James that we're not supposed to be surprised by these tribulations, fiery trials, sufferings, temptations. God wants us to experience them. And they can produce more faith in God and less faith in ourselves. He likes to put us in boats during storms. To see if we'll say, God's here, I have nothing to fear. So God wants us to get saved through the cross of his son Jesus. That's a trust issue. God will save me through the sacrifice of his own son because he loves me. Then when we start hearing his voice in prayer... He's going to tell us, read my word, meditate on it, believe in it, fight Satan's lies off in your mind with it. Then you can have peace of mind. We're in a spiritual war Satan. He does not want us having peace of mind. He wants us having fear of mind. If we believe Satan's lies, we'll have a mind full of fear. If we believe God's truth, we can have a mind full of perfect peace. It's like when Jesus calmed the storm in the Boat story, peace, be still, telling the storm to stop and be peaceful or something. Well, that's what we need God to do in our own minds. When they're all stressed out like a Martha or something, peace, be still. And we could be like a Mary, resting with Jesus. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. That's what the Bible says, rest in your best friend God, rest in his almighty power. Jesus is in the boat with you. You're safe with God. It's supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to be a stressful world of tribulation. But we're supposed to be joyful because Jesus with us can help us to handle it all. Jesus is in the boat with us. We're safe with Jesus. It's like a vision I had. Um, me and Jesus were in a boat, and we were looking over at a coastline, and it was like it was all on fire, and it looked like a forest fire or something. I looked closer at it, and it looks like a city on fire, and I start to get anxious about it. And Jesus just turns to me in the boat and says, You're safe with me, Rod. 
pointing his finger on my chest, trying to assure me that it doesn't matter if the whole world's on fire, if I'm with Jesus, I could be safe. I could be in a fiery furnace like Shadrach and be safe with God with me in the fiery furnace, in the fiery trial. So it's like when the tribulation starts up, the demons start up. The temptations of Satan to not trust in God, to try to trust in ourselves, to be afraid. So when a problem starts up, the demons start up, oh, where's God now? He can't be good if you got a problem or suffering or something. Try to solve it yourself. God doesn't love you. He's not going to help you. You're not safe with him now or something. You're in danger. Be afraid. And we just got to turn our eyes off of ourselves, our wisdom, our muscles, our money. Put it on God's wisdom and muscles and money instead. Put it on his word, saying, fear not, I'm with you, I'll help you. I'm a very present help in times of trouble. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So when we get into suffering, and Satan starts tempting us, be afraid, God won't help you, he doesn't like you, you're too sinful or whatever. Then we got to keep resisting that. No, Satan. I don't have to think about it that way in this problem of suffering. God is with me. God's testing my faith in him, trying to make it grow stronger in this fiery trial. If I just keep resisting your lies, you'll go away. Adam and Eve should have did that, but instead they listened to Satan, followed through with the plan to sin against God, and think that God's no good because he won't allow them to have the fruit from the tree of knowledge or so. Jesus said, no, Satan. I don't want you to think God's bad and I should eat this bread or something I'm made out of a rock or something. I want to worship God, not you, Satan. Until Satan left. That's what we got to do. If there's a problem starting up, Satan's going to tempt me to think God's bad or hurt me in the suffering, won't help me. Just got to keep saying, God help me with this problem. Help me overcome this tribulation. Until Satan goes away. And the crazy thoughts in your mind that uh, you should think God's bad and sin against them like Adam and Eve thought in their mind goes away. And you have angels ministering to you or something like Jesus and his wilderness temptation. We need to hear God's prophetic voice. He may be quiet while the suffering and turmoil and the temptation are going on, but we have to believe that this won't last forever. I'm not tempted all the time. I'm not suffering all the time. I'm not having problems all the time. Sometimes I have problems. Sometimes I'm suffering. Then the demons start it up. It's like I say, when the dogs start to bark, the demons start to bark. When you get into a problem, dogs barking or something, the demons start barking at you. Do something about it. Stop those dogs from barking to have peace or something. God wants us to be able to hear the dogs bark and not be bothered by them. Just wait till they stop barking. Or when Satan's tempting us to think God can't be good in our suffering, keep resisting him till he goes away. He's like a barking dog or whatever. God's no good. You, you can't be good if you're suffering and stuff like this. When you read the Bible, everybody was going through suffering and they were learning to have faith in God through it. It was something good for them. It's like Paul had a lot of suffering in his life, but yet he could say... He could have perfect peace in the prison for two years. Because God was with them. God was saying like to Paul, This is my will for you. I want you to write the New Testament in this prison. I'll help you to do it. No fear. This is God's will. He's helped me to do it. God always wins. And um, Jesus sought God's help to go to a cross for us. we got to seek God's help to do suffering things for his kingdom that he tells us to do. We're supposed to ask God what to do, pray and obey. Get busy doing what he's telling us to do with his power to do it. And he gives us peace and joy for obeying him. The Bible says there's no peace for the wicked. There's no peace for the people in hell forever. So there's perfect peace in heaven forever. And we decide... Whether we want to trust in God or in his truth or trust in Satan's lies instead. We need to believe that God's like a perfect problem solver. He's a very present help in times of trouble. So we've got to get out of the satanic mindset that life's supposed to be easy. Jesus said the road to eternal life is difficult. 
you're in a spiritual war. Satan's trying to stop you from believing truth or obeying God. We got to resist him. The Bible says that Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. We're going to follow his example. Paul had all kinds of tribulation in his life. We got to follow his example. It's like God's trying to toughen up his remnant now for tougher times later. If we can't handle the tribulation in our life now, how are we going to handle it when World War III starts up? He's working really hard to get us to trust in him, not us. It's like I had this uh, vision one time. Jesus was like one of those crossing guards for the kids across the road or something. He had a stop sign in his hand. And he was saying to me something like, uh, Stop trying to do it yourself. Stop trying to do it yourself. Stop trying to trust in yourself, Rod. It was like a vision or something. And he taught me more things about that vision later, but that's what God's trying to teach us to do through our trouble. Don't try to trust in yourself. It's like these people that are godless try to learn to trust in themselves from birth, and they don't have any trust in God. Then when trouble hits, they just fall apart or something. Go crazy. It's like today's society is getting more and more stressful, putting on the news and the internet, and in society it's getting more stressful out there. People are turning to drugs to try to find peace or something. Their minds racing with the television and the internet and the cell phones and rush, rush, rush all over searching for things and they have a low attention span and everything. We need to have a strong attention span on oh, God with us. We need supernatural peace, not natural peace. It's not about trying to fix all your problems by yourself to feel peaceful for five minutes. It's about feeling spiritual peace in whatever circumstance you're in all the time. It's seeking after a supernatural peace through trusting in God, not a physical peace through trusting in Rod or yourself. Control everything yourself. It's trusting in God's control, not your control. It's like a motto I have. i got to live in an evil and suffering world, but God can help me through it. Bring good out of it for me. Make me happy in it. And help me not to be bothered by it. It's like God's trying to say to me when I see the stress in society. Don't let it bother you, Rod. You're safe with me. Even through World War III. So we have to believe that uh, God is like a best friend who's all-powerful, who loves us so much he gave his son Jesus to die on the cross for us and wants to take all our sins away as a gift. Wants to tell us what to do, give us the power to do it before we'll start experiencing some supernatural peace of mind. It's like it says in Philippians 4 that uh, don't be anxious about anything, don't be trusting in yourself about anything. Pray, ask God to help you in your trouble, and he will, and he'll give you the supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding in your mind. Put your mind on God, trust in him, and you shall have perfect peace. Not look at your wisdom and muscles and money, look at God's wisdom and muscles and money. There's nothing too difficult for God to do, there's lots too difficult for me to do. It's when we trust in ourselves that we create fear. It's when we trust in God that we create supernatural peace. And as the tribulation gets stronger in the future for the wicked, we need more of this supernatural peace helping us to handle it through it. Getting peace in Jesus. Getting supernatural peace from the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit's peace. God's trying to break our habit of trying to create peace through trying to fix all our problems and escape every suffering or something ourselves. No, God wants us to be able to go through the terrible suffering, which could be like a cross or something, and have peace through it. Go through the fiery furnace with peace. Go through the lion's den with peace. Go through the slavery in Egypt with peace, like Joseph or something. And God blesses this stuff on Judgment Day. Those who trust in God, those who obey Him to do His will, get great rewards and great careers on Judgment Day. They learn to trust in God, not themselves. They learn to have spiritual peace, not physical peace or supernatural peace instead of human fear or something.
They learn to say no to Satan and his lies and yes to God and his truth. So we need to hear God speak to us prophetically. Fear not, I'm with you, I'll help you. I'm your best friend, I love you so much. I gave my son for you. I love you so much, I died on the cross for your sins. Believe in this awesome, good friend God, or best friend God. Believe he's like a superman inside of us. There's nothing too difficult for him to do. You're safe with me, Rod. In the boat, during the storms and tribulations. So God may allow us to go through some suffering circumstances. It says in the Bible, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your commands after the suffering or something. If we're not learning to trust in God in our suffering, we got no peace of mind in our suffering. God's got to still work on us through the suffering. Like Joni Erickson in a wheelchair. She says, I don't want a physical healing, I want a spiritual healing. God doesn't want to heal me physically out of this wheelchair. Heal me spiritually so I can have peace and joy in the wheelchair and still give glory to God in my suffering circumstance. So I got lots of suffering in my life, but uh, I try to get a supernatural peace and I don't really care. It's like the affliction drives me closer to God and His peace. It doesn't cause me to turn away from God in my suffering. And God could heal me of my back pain any time if he wants to, but he seems to want to just keep it in my life, and that's fine. He's in control. He can heal at any time. If he does want to heal it, he's trying to get a spiritual healing. Trust in me, not you, Rod. Trust in me, not you, Rod. And that's good for me. So we need to believe. God can work all our sufferings out for our good. God is here to help us with all our problems. Because like a perfect father or a best friend who's all-powerful. It's like a superman living in us. And we can have supernatural peace instead of... You call it supernatural fear from Satan. <laughs> but uh, we need that supernatural peace so that we can be in the lion's den and feel safe. Fiery furnace and be safe. In Great Tribulation or World War III and feel safe. Just ask God what to do in the problem. Perfect problem solver. He's very present help in times of trouble. You're safe with me in the boat. Like Jesus in the boat during the storm story. That uh, nothing shall by any means harm you. We need to hear God speak to us through his word and through his spirit. Fear not. I'm with you. I'll hold your hand. I'll help you. What he said in Isaiah. My perfect father God's here. My best friend God's here. No matter what we go through, even the valley of the shadow of death, he's with me to help me through it. I will not fear. It's a choice. Believe lies. God's not here. God doesn't love you. God can't help you. Or God is here, and he does love you, and he can help you. It's like I can lay down and go to sleep because God makes me dwell in safety. So there's a lot of tribulation and stress out there, but it doesn't have to make us fear. We don't have to try to handle it ourselves. Stop trying to trust in ourselves. Start to trust in God. Start to let Him help us solve our problems. He's been solving my problems for 60 years. I'm sure He's going to keep on going. I can trust in Him, even through severe back pain for many years. I can trust in God to help me through it. Supernatural joy, supernatural peace, even though you're physically suffering, like a Joni Erickson in a wheelchair. God can work it out for your good. God chooses the weak things of this world. The humble things, unless you become like a humble little child with your perfect Father God, you won't enter the kingdom. The person who chooses to be a good and faithful and loving and joyful servant of all gets the greatest rewards in heaven. God rewards suffering, love the, the most in heaven. Follow Jesus' example of suffering, Paul's example of suffering, but be content in these suffering circumstances. And the God of peace, which surpasses all understanding, will be in you, helping you to have perfect peace. So that's a bit about God's perfect peace for us.